Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. We would like to take you to Pennsylvania, United States. And my name is Hani. I am the Education USA Advisor at the Fulbright Commission in Prague. And today I have the four special guests. Uh, I have Julia, Kylie, Anna, and Lily. They are all Fulbright grantees, and they are all English teaching assistants at Czech high schools for this year. Thank you girls for joining me today and thank you for taking us to Pennsylvania. I'm so excited. Okay. All right, so a few fast facts about Pennsylvania is that it's nicknamed the Keystone State, meaning that it's a landlocked state um, in the middle between like New Jersey, Ohio, and a few other states. Um, its statehood, it became a state in 1787, uh, becoming the second state in the United States. It has a population size of around 12.9 million people as of 2022. Uh, the capital of Pennsylvania is Harrisburg, located closer to the state of Ohio. Um, our, big, our, our biggest city is Philadelphia. Uh, it has over 1.5 million people as of 2021. Uh, it's abbreviated as PA. Our state bird is the ruffed grouse. Our state flower is the mountain laurel. And we have a few major sports teams, including the Philadelphia Phillies, which are a baseball team, the Philadelphia Eagles, an American football team, uh, our Flyers, I, uh, which is an ice hockey team, and the 76ers. Uh, this, uh, Pennsylvania is also known for the Declaration of Independence. This is where it was signed, and it's also where the Constitution was written. Hmm. Yeah, so a few more fast facts. Um, I'm actually from the city of Philadelphia, so I decided to talk about it a little bit more. So in the top left hand corner, you will see a, a beautiful shot of the city of Philadelphia. In the middle, you will see our famous art museum. If any of you are familiar with the Rocky movie, that is where Rocky Balboa, also played by Sylvester Stallone, ran up those uh, steps right there in the middle. Uh, you can see the city skyline in the back, as well as our famous uh, Schuylkill River on, on the right side. And you can also see all the foliage in the fall time. Uh, Pennsylvania itself is also known for its candy, specifically Hershey's chocolate, as you will see in the left-hand corner. Philadelphia cheesesteaks are a staple of Philadelphia. If you ever visit, please try our cheesesteaks. They are wonderful. Uh, we have the Liberty Bell right there in the center, a love statue, and again, our sports teams. Uh, for those of you who are also interested, I did a little bit of research and on our Flyers team, we have Lukasz Sedlak. Um, I am probably butchered his name, but he was originally <laughs> from Czeski Budjovice. So we do have a Czech uh, player on the Flyers team. That's really cool. Julia, what is in the Philly cheesecake? Cheese, cheesecake, Czech cheesecake. Yes, <laughs> yes. So in a Philly cheesecake, it's usually mm -hmm. some type of meat, typically mm -hmm. beef. You can also order chicken. Um, mm -hmm. and also a type of American cheese or provolone. So meat and cheese primarily, onions, sometimes spices, and you can also order it with a side of French fries. Very nice. <laughs> okay, um, moving on a little bit. Um, also America's first zoo is in Philadelphia, which is very, very cool. Um, I actually am from Pennsylvania. So I used to go there when I was really little and it's something I still like remember from when I'm little. Um, and then, in Pennsylvania as well, um, Lancaster County, you'll see in the middle, um, you'll see like the little horse and buggy. Um, that's a big part of Pennsylvania with the Amish community, um, which I know some, which might be like a little bit interesting for you guys as well. Um, a little bit about them, their backstory, they're um, usually religious groups. So they grew up like in the church. Um, it's evolved a little bit for what religion they are. There's a couple different ones, but usually um, they live a little bit more traditionally. Um, some people say like a little bit less technology, more like towards the past, that kind of way of living. So if you are on the streets in Lancaster, you might see instead of them driving in a car, you might see them with a horse and a buggy with their families. Um, I know some of the families also may not really work with electricity as much or technologies, um, but that's like their way of living with their religion. Um, and then the other two pictures are um, Pittsburgh and then Pittsburgh's um, well-known food, like the Philly cheesesteak is pierogies. So that is one big thing um, that you guys can see there. 
Uh, yeah, so this picture, you might be wondering, what am I even looking at? But you're looking at the state of Pennsylvania on a map and where all of our universities, colleges, and technical schools are located. Pennsylvania in particular is known for its over 300 universities, colleges, and technical schools. The city of Philadelphia alone has over 55 colleges to choose from. So if you were thinking about studying in the US, Pennsylvania might be a good uh, state to look into because we have so many to offer. That's amazing. Like I myself studied in Pennsylvania for a year. I was an exchange student. I studied at a Moravian University, which I can see from here in the like mess of logos. Uh, but guys, uh, we also have a lot of students, a lot of Czech students at UPenn, and I'm very happy to connect you with them. They even started a Czechoslovakian club at UPenn. So uh, there's so many of them. So please let me know. We are going to hear about plenty of uh, universities in Pennsylvania. Uh, but please let me know if I can um, help you connect you to Czech students studying there already. OK, so first we have Villanova University. This is my school. This is where I studied. And I studied political science, uh, sustainability studies, and sociology here. Um, so Villanova is, was located in 1842. It is located in Villanova, PA, which is about 12 miles west of the city of Philadelphia. So not exactly in the city, but it's a little bit out. So if you ever want to visit uh, the city, you, you are more than welcome to do so because you're so close. It is a private Augustinian Catholic university. There are about 11,000 undergraduate students, graduate students, and law students. Um, we have six colleges on campus, uh, one being the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. We have nursing, engineering, the business school. Um, we, also have a um, we also have the law school as well as the uh, graduate building as well. Um, in terms of the cost of tuition, it is about 60,000 US dollars per year, but scholarships are available. I know many students, including myself, that have received scholarships, so they are out there for sure. Um, our graduation rate is 92%, which is fairly high, meaning that when you enter our university, you're very likely to graduate as well. In terms of the career outcome rate, we have a 91.8% career outcome rate. Um, we also have fairly intimate uh, classroom sizes, 11 students per one teacher. So most of our classrooms are fairly small. Um, so you get to know the professor well, and they also know your name. You're not just a number. Our mascot is the wildcat. Um, our school colors are blue oh, and sorry. white. It's okay. Uh, and we were also ranked number 49 by US News and World Report. Another fun fact too, is that our science building was named after Mendel Greger who I know also studied in Brno. So we also have a little bit of Czech history on um, that respect. And if you were a science major at Villanova University, you will learn a lot about Gregor Mendel in your first week here as well. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yep, and here are a few of our pictures. On the left-hand corner, you will see a packed stadium of students getting ready for a basketball game. Basketball Villanova is a favorite of all students and faculty alike. Um, we have a division one men's basketball team that has won the national championships three times, once in 1985, second in 2016, and again in 2018. It has also made many appearances in the final four. Um, we also see on the bottom left corner um, is the bridge leading to the main church on campus. And while it is um, an Augustinian university and we do have a church on campus, you do not have to be religious to attend. Um, we do have uh, theology classes offered to students, but again, they are not mandatory. Um, on the right hand side, you will see a picture of the entire university from above. In the middle is our football stadium. And on the bottom right hand corner is me and a few of my friends at the famous Oreo statue, as we call it. Uh, we were taking pictures. Uh, before we actually graduated just a few months ago. That's cool. Can you have a picnic in the middle of the campus where I saw the green lawn? Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, okay. yes. <laughs> Students have picnics like almost all the time, yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Lily, um, and I am now going to talk about another university in Pennsylvania, uh, Bucknell University, which is where I went to school. Um, 
for my undergraduate degree. And I'm originally from Chicago, so most of my understanding of Pennsylvania is specific to where Bucknell is located. Um, and so Bucknell was founded in 1846, and it is located in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, which is central Pennsylvania and um, somewhat in the middle of nowhere, but that means that it's really beautiful uh, around the area. And I always joke about how it's about two and a half hours away from any large city. Um, so whether you're going to New York City or Washington DC, um, it's pretty much two and a half hours, no matter what, if you're driving. Um, so lots of people do travel there on the weekends too, not every weekend, but if you want access to a city, it's there. Um, and so Bucknell is a private, private undergraduate liberal arts institution. Um, and there's approximately 3,684 undergraduate students. And there is actually a very small graduate, um, program. So those are, there are 33 graduate students there as well. And there are three different colleges or schools on campus. So arts and sciences, management, and engineering. And when you apply, you need to uh, specify which specific college you are applying for. Um, and so the cost of tuition is 77,104 US dollars per year, which is a lot. But um, as Julia mentioned, there are many, many scholarships um, that are available. And more than half of the students who attend Bucknell receive financial aid in some form. Um, and I also wanted to highlight that uh, just one specific scholarship that is available, and it was a scholarship that I received when I went to Bucknell, and that is called the Presidential Fellows uh, Grant Scholarship. And this was really one of the most impactful parts of my experience at Bucknell. Um, and it's also partly why I chose to go to Bucknell. Um, and so the Presidential Fellows Program is um, partly a scholarship in order to go to Bucknell University. But in addition to that, uh, you can sort of partake in a work study program where um, you are compensated for undergraduate research with a professor in the university. So you're paired with a specific professor working on a specific project, um, which is a really unique opportunity, I think, um, and something that is really wonderful about smaller colleges that are primarily undergraduate, um, because there are more opportunities to work directly with professors and engage in research on campus. Um, and so that was something that I really, really loved about my experience at Bucknell. And also I majored in, uh, or I double majored in psychology and women's and gender studies. And my research was focused primarily on campus sexual assault in the psychology department. Um, and in addition to that, there are many other different scholarships, uh, that you could apply for and also there are work study programs so you could work in the library or at the local coffee shop um, or in the mail office in order to uh, also help with the cost mm -hmm. and so the graduation rate for bucknell is 88 percent the career outcome rate is 95 percent and uh, the student faculty ratio is nine students for uh, one professor, which is really wonderful. As Julia was talking about before, that means that you are able to get to know your professors really well and they get to know you. So you can form some really important and lasting connections with faculty on campus, which is really great for after mm -hmm. university as well. Um, our mascot is the bison and the school colors are blue and orange and we are ranked 34th. Um, of all national liberal arts colleges by the US News and World Report. Um, something else that I wanted to highlight about Bucknell is that the application is now test optional. So you do not need to send in an ACT or SAT score if you do not want to. Um, and in addition to that, I'll just talk a bit about the culture there. Um, there are lots of different ways that you can get involved on campus. 
So for me, my, uh, in addition to the Presidential Fellow Program, which was in itself a community, I also was a member of an a cappella group on campus. Um, and there are multiple of those that you could join if you are interested in singing. Uh, there's a great theater program as well as um, Greek life is very prominent on campus. And there's also uh, something called residential colleges at Bucknell. Mm -hmm. So when you apply to the university um, as a first year or, you know, yeah, the first, the first year that you go to the university, you can live in a dorm that is specific to um, a subject. So for me, I applied directly to the arts residential college. And so I was living with lots of other students who were also interested in art and music and all of those things. Um, and there are many, different residential colleges. So there's, uh, to name another, there's a residential college called the Global Residential College that focuses on global issues. Um, so international issues around the world. Uh, and also there's other colleges such as like science-based residential colleges as well. And so that's a really great way to find people on campus that you connect with. Um, and also, something else that I really loved about living in Lewisburg is that uh, I was able to engage with the community. And so I volunteered at a local middle school, um, as well as the farm that we have on campus. So there's lots of different ways to get involved and to meet uh, new people. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So you said you double majored. Uh, what does it mean that you actually choose two majors or one is a minor? Can you explain that a little more? Yeah, so that's something that I also really loved about Bucknell is that um, lots of people decide to double major. So that means that both are majors, but they're separate. Mm -hmm. um, so some people even would double major and then minor as well. So that means that I'm getting the full degree in both areas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Was it like double work then? In a way, yes. <laughs> okay. But I, I will say my uh, two majors were also really nicely connected in different mm -hmm. ways. So I felt like my um, understanding of psychology influenced my understanding of gender studies and vice mm -hmm. versa, as well as my research, I felt like was a really perfect connection of the two. So it didn't really feel like double work because I felt like um, I was getting a new perspective from each of my majors. And also it's, it was the same amount of classes overall that you would need to take. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so here are a few more pictures. Something else that I really love about Bucknell is it is absolutely beautiful. The campus is amazing. Um, so you can see here we have on the top left, uh, that is the Bertrand Library, the main library. And then the bottom right is the quad. And the quad is really, really amazing. Um, when it's warm out, students will bring picnic blankets and sit around and do their work, have picnics, talk, relax, all those kinds of things. So it's a really, really beautiful campus. Um, and there's also a uh, river near the campus, as well as a rail trail or a very long path that you can run on or bike on, uh, anything you really want to do. So I really loved that. I went on runs all the time on the path. Um, we also have a D1 men's basketball team. So it's a lot of fun to go to the basketball games. Um, and yeah, that's about all I have. That's cool. You said that it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Uh, yeah. Does that mean that can, can you get around without a car? Because I can imagine that an international student coming from a Czech Republic undergrad yeah. would probably not have a car. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't have a car either. So yes, great question. Um, there is an on-campus shuttle. So mm -hmm. if you needed to leave campus for whatever reason, like go to the bookstore downtown or the grocery store or anything like that, um, mm -hmm. there is a shuttle that is going around hourly maybe I think mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but everything on campus the campus is small enough where you could walk anywhere that you need to be and um, all the students primarily live on campus for all four mm -hmm. years so everything you need is right there and there's cool. no need to worry about needing a mm -hmm. car or anything. 
definitely not. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, also, uh, in addition to that, the closest airport you do need to get a ride to, but there are shuttles for every single break. So again, there's no need to worry because the school will get you to the airport. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. Okay. Um, so hi again, everybody. Uh, my name is Anna. I also went to school in Pennsylvania, but did not, uh, I'm not from PA. I'm actually from Maryland, uh, which is the state bordering PA on the Southern border. Um, and I went to a school called Lafayette College. So it was founded in 1826 and it's located in Easton PA. Uh, I wrote this little, it's in East PA on the New Jersey border. Um, I used to tour guide when I was on campus and the joke I would always tell families is that if you threw a rock from the top of campus, you would hit New Jersey. So it's that close. Um, you can walk into New Jersey. Um, mm -hmm. It is a private liberal arts college, uh, very similar to Lily's college as well, except we don't have any graduate students on campus. Um, we have about 2,500 undergraduate students and only one school or college. It's all just Lafayette. Um, but something that's really unique about our school is this engineering program we have. Um, it's a very, very robust engineering program. There are four different main disciplines of engineering. I did not do engineering and I, I apologize, I can't name them all. Um, and they just added some sub majors. So you can major like generally in engineering with a concentration in three other subtopics. And those aren't related to the main four disciplines of engineering we have. Um, but the great thing is you can, you don't have to apply separately to this as a like separate engineering school. Uh, you can apply to Lafayette College and indicate that you're interested in engineering. And then if you do the first couple of classes and you really don't like it, you can just switch out of it like you would switch your major. Um, so the process is very easy. Same thing if you get to Lafayette and you realize, wow, engineering is the thing for me. You switch into the program just like you're switching your major. Um, the only caveat is the engineers have a more strict set of classes they have to take. Um, generally at liberal arts colleges, you just have some courses you need to take for your major, but there's no um, real like set path for everybody. Everyone can do what they, is best for them. Um, but engineers at Lafayette have a little bit more of a strict course load. So if you want to be in the engineering program, they recommend that you officially declare before you start your sophomore year or your second year of university. Um, but it's still a really awesome way to be able to explore engineering uh, without the commitment of having to apply to a separate school, which is what the case is at most other universities. Uh, what did you study? Yeah. Sorry. Oh, what, what did, did study? I study? Uh -huh. so I, no, no, yeah. Um, so <laughs> I actually studied two very different subjects. I studied music and I studied mathematics with a concentration in statistics. Um, I got two separate degrees. So something Lafayette offers is uh, we have double majors like Lily explained and it works the same way. We also have something called a dual degree, which means you get two separate degrees uh, while you're studying at the university. Uh, the difference between a double major and dual degree is you have to get eight more credits, which Lafayette's uh, credit system is different than most universities. We don't work on credit hours. We just say every class is worth one credit. Um, and then if you're involved in music ensembles or you um, do some other class that's not the normal amount of credit hours that can count for 0.25 credits. Um, so you have extra credits to do as a dual degree, but um, that meant that I graduated with a bachelor's of science degree in math with that concentration in statistics, statistics. And then I have a bachelor of arts in music. So I have like, two pieces of paper sitting at home. Um, yeah, it was a really, really unique opportunity that I don't think would have happened for me at a lot of other schools, um, especially like I did two senior honors theses. So I spent a year working on two very different projects. I was doing math modeling of tumor dynamics in my math thesis, and I was writing a short chamber opera for my music thesis. So. Uh, I have very different interests and a school like Lafayette allowed me to explore both of those at a very, very deep level. Um, mm -hmm. So I 
if you're interested in multiple things and you want to go study more than one thing in university, I would highly recommend schools like Lafayette, like Bucknell, or just generally smaller liberal arts colleges that have those opportunities. Um, yeah. So it's amazing you could all fit it in your schedule. Like, you know, it, it yes. can be. And my experience with the American education system at this higher education level was that there was a lot of homework and a lot of reading and uh, tons of essays. And doing it like twice as much is like, <laughs> no, but thank you. <laughs> yeah. I think it was um, a testament to my absolute love of school. Like, okay. my next plans are. PhD probably so I think this is the thing for me but I that said I didn't not involve myself in other things and I'll talk a little bit about some okay. extracurricular activities I did um but I'm a I'm a academic at heart and I if I could <laughs> take classes for the rest of my life I would so that is a huge contributor to why I did the, my degrees like that and it did require quite a bit of planning which is something I enjoy but even if you're not like super, you don't know exactly what you want coming in freshman year, you still have plenty of time to figure that out. So mm -hmm. nice. yeah. um, to go back a little bit to tuition, 76,000, almost $77,000 a year. But like Julia and Lily were talking about scholarships are for sure available. Um, we have academic scholarships. That's how I uh, afforded to go to school here. And then we also have athletic scholarships. Lafayette is actually a D1 school. So um, particularly our football team and our basketball team offer a number of scholarships to my knowledge. Um, and there's also a lot of other sports on campus that are uh, doing well and are uh, interested in taking students. We have a cross team, we have a golf team, um, tennis, a lot of other sports mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, and in addition to the actual D1 league sports, we have club sports um, and we have intramural leagues. So at whatever level you're interested in getting involved, there are things for you. Mm -hmm. um, we have a graduation rate of 90% and career outcome rate of 94%. This just means we're getting a lot of students through school and they're having good outcomes post-graduation. Uh, student faculty ratio 10.5 to 1 so again similar to Julia and Lily a very small ratio which means your professors get to know who you are you get to know your professors and I think this is most valuable for research opportunities uh, if you're interested in doing any research I think it's really important to build rapport with a professor you want to work with um, and there's no easier way to do that than just taking a class with them um, so actually my I had a research advisor turned thesis advisor uh, throughout my senior year who I took her class in junior fall. And that fall, I had just sent her an email that said, hey, your research is really cool. Can we chat about it? And then that first call I had with her, she was like, I was hoping you'd ask me. I really want you to do research with me in the summer. And I was set from there. So um, again, I think those small ratios allow those interactions to happen. And I'm really grateful that we had all of that. Mm -hmm. um a couple other fun facts before i talk a little more about experience and things on campus our mascot is the leopard because who doesn't love a good bit of alliteration so lafayette leopards um our school colors were maroon and white and we're ranked 39th uh by u.s news and world report um lily and i have various like on paper i think our colleges are very similar um, mm -hmm. But it's interesting to look at the variety of differences that we had in our experiences and just in general that there's a lot of different private liberal arts colleges that exist in the US and specifically in Pennsylvania. Um, so it's interesting to look at those differences and find the one that's right for you. Mm -hmm. um, so before I move on to the, or yeah, we can look at the pretty Sorry. pictures. <laughs> no, no, you can go to the next. They're pretty while I uh, talk. Um, so I'll explain the pictures and then talk about some activities. The first picture on the top left is an aerial or um, view from the top of our campus. It's so beautiful in the fall. Uh, all the trees change colors. And we're actually, it's difficult to tell from this picture, but we're on the top of a hill and everything else kind of goes down from where our campus is. So from different spots on campus, you can see out over the, uh, I think it's the Delaware River that runs right next to our um, campus. So looking out across that is really beautiful. We're also 
right on the edge of Easton City. Um, so it's a 10, 15 minute walk to the center of downtown Easton, uh, which is not the most hustle bustle city, but is certainly a city and has really, really great restaurants, a lot of different fun activities to do. Um, we also host uh, quite a few festivals, including Garlic Fest, which as the name implies, we have lots of garlic, and then PA Bacon Fest. So it's the state's bacon festival <laughs> that we host in Easton, and there's bacon flavored ice cream, and there's bacon flavored donuts, and kind of anything you can imagine that would involve bacon. Um, so it's the location I really love. It's also mm -hmm. only about an hour, hour and a half from New York City, and roughly an hour from Philly or Philadelphia. So it's very easy to get to those cities from our campus. There's a bus station downtown that you can get um, public bus, public transportation from Easton to those cities. Um, there's an airport, the Lehigh Valley International Airport, that's about a 20 minute drive away. And we also have shuttles like Lily's school during breaks. Um, there's also major airports in Philadelphia and New York. So if you need to fly internationally, um, it's also pretty easy to get to Newark Airport. So uh, transportation to and from is, is pretty good. Um, like I mentioned, we have a football team and a basketball team uh, that's D1. Those games are probably the most attended, uh, particularly our basketball team, because our football team is okay, but our basketball team is uh, pretty good. And uh, those are the stadiums that we have. And then that bottom right picture is a side view of our quad on a very sunny fall day. Um, again, the campus is just stunning and all of the buildings have different architecture. So it's kind of fun to go walk around and see. Um, besides sports, I think I've mentioned a lot of different sports activities that we have. Um, I myself was, I was involved in ski team for one year and decided that throwing myself down a hill as fast as I could was not the thing I wanted to be doing. I still love to ski, just not racing. Um, so that was the only sports experience I had, but I did a lot of, uh, or I had a lot of involvement in music and theater. Um, we have a downtown arts campus, which is a five minute walk um, from the top of the hill that has a black box theater and a um, rehearsal space. We also have Williams Center for the Arts, which is our central main stage. And we also host uh, visiting acts. So if anyone's familiar with the Orpheus Chamber Orchestra, they've come there. Um, probably not, but they're a really, really good orchestra. So we host a lot of um, musical events that are just beyond the Lafayette community. Um, I was, beside, aside from theater, I was involved in a lot of music ensembles. We offer them as classes so you can get course credit for them. It's a really nice GPA boost, but also it was involvement that I was really interested in doing. Um, and we have a really interesting scholarship called the Kappa or Creative and Performing Arts Scholarship that you can apply for either before you get to campus or when you're on campus. And this provides specific funding for arts related projects. And they can be whatever you would like. So for example, um, I needed new strings. I play the violin and I needed new strings for that. So they would help me buy those strings so that I could play in concerts and things on campus. Um, and like I mentioned, I wrote a short chamber opera for my thesis and I used some money from that scholarship to fund the set design um, because I didn't wanna pay a couple hundred dollars out of pocket for the set. Um, other than theater and music, there's lots of different clubs, lots of different things you can join. Um, overall, I think Lafayette provides a, a wide variety of activities so everybody can kind of find their niche. We do have Greek life as well. Uh, roughly half of campus is involved, but if that's not your thing, there are plenty of other things to get involved in. Um, and Easton has enough, if you're looking for like things to do uh, on the weekends, there's a lot of other stuff going on. Um, so I think that's a strength of the school that I really, really love. Um, the yeah, Greek life so. is really interesting because you say like, it's, <laughs> if it's not your thing, you don't have to, it, we don't have it in the Czech Republic. You cannot yeah. be a part of a Greek life community, which I guess is the sororities and fraternities, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, have you, like any of you, have you been a part of a Greek life? Lily, you have? How was it? Yeah. Um, so I actually did not have a very long experience in Greek life because I, at Bucknell, 
Um, Greek life is very, very big. It's, mm, I want to say 66% of the mm -hmm. population. I could be wrong about that, but it's a lot of students mm -hmm. um, that are involved in Greek life. And uh, something that's interesting about the Greek life at Bucknell is that you cannot go through recruitment is what it's called um, until sophomore year. Mm -hmm. So for me, I went through recruitment and I joined a sorority and then COVID happened. And so oh. it kind of turned into nothing really for me, just because uh, primarily I was joining in order to make friends and uh, join in on social events and philanthropy and that kind of thing. And a lot of that couldn't really happen because of COVID, unfortunately. Um, but for me, uh, it was a really great way to meet more people and uh, find people that I felt like I connected with through the recruitment process. Um, I also think the philanthropy aspect of Greek life is really wonderful. Um, so usually each organization has some partner organization that they partner with in order to either raise money for a cause or help out. So for example, um, my sorority was partnered with the Ronald McDonald House. And so we would go and um, spend time with the families of uh, sick children at the local hospital, and we would cook dinner for them and spend time with them. But like I said, COVID really impacted my experience mm -hmm. in Greek life. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely a very um, popular thing at Bucknell. And I think a lot of United States colleges, Greek life is, uh, tends to be a, a big thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, I, just to add, a, just a side note, uh, Lafayette also waits to, or delays uh, recruitment until sophomore year, um, mm -hmm. which is nice to get to know people before you just make that, you make the decision to try recruitment or not. And the philanthropy, I, I really love what Lily said about the philanthropy, because that was one of the highlights for, again, I didn't do Greek life, but the Greek life events on campus were often open to people not in Greek life, um, mm -hmm. and especially the phil philanthropic events. So we would have um, something called Can Jam, where uh, two fraternities that had houses on a separate field would, like, you would play Frisbee, throwing Frisbees into cans, and you had to, like, sign up, and the money went to um, the charities that they were uh, partnered with. So it can be really a great thing on campus. Um, and I also, before I finish, just wanted to mention that we have an international student association as well that's really strong on Lafayette's campus. A couple of people I know, they weren't from the Czech Republic, but most of their family was, like they were first generation um, in the US. Um, and my, like one of my best friends from school is actually from Turkey. So I think that a lot, there's a lot of international presence on Lafayette's campus, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, um, hi everyone again, my name is Kylie. Um, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about the University of Pittsburgh. Um, before I even really start getting into it, um, for me, this presentation is a little bit different. I am from Pennsylvania, although I have not gone to school at the University of Pittsburgh yet. I will be going for my master's degree when I return from my Fulbright. So um, I did go to my university undergraduate in Maryland. Um, shout out Maryland as well. But um, I will be experiencing all this stuff at a Pennsylvania school soon. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, but I just wanted to start with that saying I actually haven't attended yet like a lot of the other people, but I'm excited to attend um, because it is my home state. So um, Pittsburgh, University of Pittsburgh was founded in 1787. Um, it is located in the city of Pittsburgh um, and has a population of a little over 300,000 people. Um, so it is like a little bit of a bigger city on its own, which is cool if that's something that you're looking for a little bit different than maybe some places that you might see in Europe or the smaller villages that you guys are from Pittsburgh is known as like one of the bigger cities in Pennsylvania. Um, 
It is a public institution. Um, the number of students for undergrad is around uh, 20,000. And then graduate enrollment is around 10,000 students. Um, and like I said, I am going into a graduate program um, next year. So I was going to go this year, but since I got my Fulbright, I deferred for the year, um, which was really cool. The university was very understanding about that as well. So I think that that kind of just gives you a little look at how understanding they are about like um, international, like cultural exchanges, that kind of thing. They were super understanding with me. Um, I basically just said, hey, I got a Fulbright scholarship to the Czech Republic. They said, no problem. They deferred me for the year and said, you're welcome back in the fall once you get back. So um, that was really cool. One thing that I wanted to note about uh, Pittsburgh is I actually have a lot of friends um, either attending Pittsburgh for um, undergraduate, graduate, or they're going to the nearby colleges like Duquesne and Carnegie Mellon. That's what I was gonna say. There's a few colleges right near Pittsburgh's campuses as well. So not only are you going to get the University of Pittsburgh's kind of culture and the things that they do there, but Duquesne is pretty much, um, like Anna said, like a stone throw away from the campus. So um, you can also get some cultural things and maybe go onto other campuses and, and see different um, life like near there, which is really, really cool. Something that um, Pittsburgh offers as well, because I do have one of my best friends went to Pittsburgh for undergraduate, was that I don't know if it's for every major. I think it, it pretty much is for every major. Um, if you go to University of Pittsburgh for undergraduate, they try to give you um, like preference for if you decide to take a master's there. So for her undergraduate degree, if you plan on staying longer than your four years of university, or if you are staying for a year or two at the end, um, for her at least, her undergraduate, as long as she passed her classes and applied on time and the, re the correct way, she actually got preference to um, other students coming in from other universities, which is really cool. They kind of try and keep the tight-knit University of Pittsburgh like culture going for the undergraduate students. Um, which I think is really neat. I don't know if all colleges do that, but it was the first time I had heard of it. So mm -hmm. that's a cool opportunity for graduate programs that might be in the future. But um, and the number of schools or colleges on campus, uh, there's 16 schools offered and over 360 degree programs. Um, like I said, the University of Pittsburgh is pretty big. So there's lots of schools offered pretty much any um, degree or major or minor that you might want. Um, I would say the University of Pittsburgh will probably have it for you. Again, I can't name all the schools for undergraduate, um, but there are a bunch and all my friends that did um, attend the University of Pittsburgh for undergraduate kind of had no problem finding their own way in the way they did it. Um, I had some friends that did change majors as well while they were there. Um, it wasn't really a problem for them as well. I know, um, I think Lily and Anna touched that, on that a little bit as well. So um, there are branch campuses for University of Pittsburgh as well. So you might have heard of it if you've heard of um, Penn State. I know Penn State's a really big university in Pennsylvania as well. Um, but they have Bradsford, Greensburg, Johnston, and um, Titusville. I think that's how you pronounce it. Basically how that works if you haven't heard of a branch campus. Um, big universities like the University of Pittsburgh or Penn State, um, if you apply and you don't get in to the main campus of Pittsburgh, they might um, kind of put you off into a, a branch campus in another town um, nearby or city nearby. Um, and some people might think that's a little bit sad because they might want to go to the main campus. But the good thing about that is you um, it is a little bit cheaper, I believe, to go to a branch one. And then you have the opportunity to go to the um, main campus after a year or two, depending on like what your degree is or your program is. So I know for Penn State, some of my family members did it where they were a branch campus, saved some money, were near their hometown more, and then they transferred up to the main campus for their last two years of university, which was really cool opportunity for them as well. So they kind of get two campuses in one, if, if that's something that you're interested in as well. Um, and the branch campuses tend to be a little bit smaller. Um, which it could be something that you like as well. So um, the cost of tuition for in-state, it's around 20,000 out of state, it's a little bit more, um, 35,000. And then there's a little bit of money with room and board as well. And um, books cost, 
Um, the graduation rate is pretty high as well, the 82.5%, um, and then the career outcome rate is also high, 97%. Um, and like Lily said, it just shows that a lot of people are graduating all the way through their program and then finding jobs after graduation, which is great. Um, the student to faculty ratio is 14 to 1, which isn't horrible for a, a big university. It is a little bit higher than the other schools. But I will say, as you go through the programs, your class size does um, decrease, which is really nice. So like a lot of the other girls says, as you get through um, your program, you get to know your professors a little bit better. Reaching out to your professors, no matter where you go, I would definitely recommend doing that because um, that will get them to know you and you can get to know them a little bit better um, on a personal level. Um, our mascot is the panther. Um, our school colors are blue and like a gold yellow color. And then we were ranked 62 out of 143 um, national universities, which is really cool. Um, I have some more. I don't want to forget to add anything. So, um, oh, we are a division one school. So I'll go to my next one. Um, Okay, there it is. Um, I just had some pictures you guys can look at. A lot of them are similar with the cathedral on campus. Um, like I said, the skyline, you can see the Pittsburgh um, campus in the top right hand corner. Um, it's beautiful. It is a city. Like I said, there are um, patches of green and beautiful areas, as you can see um, on the left side. So there are still um, big quads. People sit in the grasses, kind of hang out on campus. But it is in a, um, a city area. So a lot of things are walkable which I think is a big plus, especially for exchange students. Um, another big thing for the university is that um, since it is in a city, there's lots of public transportation options. So um, even for me, when I go next year, I don't know if I will have a car or not, but if I did need to get around, there's buses, lots of people bike, I'm, I'm told, and just walk to class or walk um, through the city, which is very nice for options. Um, we are D1 school, which is great. Uh, Pittsburgh basketball, volleyball, football. The middle picture is a really big one. So um, if you see like in any like American movies, the typical football tailgates, I would say Pittsburgh being like a big university D1 school is kind of the picture of those big tailgates, fun days for um, going to football games. Um, like I said, I do have some friends that are currently at the university um, and family that are there or are going for their graduate programs. And I see them all the time doing activities around campus or just in the community, in the, in the city in general, which I think is really awesome. Um, we are D1, but like the other um, women said, if you aren't as competitive, we also have club sports and intramural sports. And um, again, Greek life as well. Um, sororities and fraternities are pretty big on Pittsburgh's campus as well, if that is something that you are looking forward to doing. Um, there is an airport relatively nearby the Pittsburgh airport. So if you guys were need to get there, I do believe there are shuttles to that as well. Um, and it is not too far. If maybe you make a few friends and you just ask them to drive you, it's only a few miles away. Um, so that wouldn't be too hard to get home. Um, like I said, it is close um, to other universities, which I think is pretty unique. Not all schools are as close to other really big universities, which is really cool. Duquesne is another really large university um, right by it. And then kind of something just like funny to add, um, since I was supposed to go to the master's program last year, but I did defer, I was already in all the group chats for my, for my major with my all the people in it. So a little bit of something funny for me is that I don't know how to get out of them. So I still get all their texts of the things that they're doing. And they seem very busy. They're always involved in the city. They're either um, going to like a movie showing in the park or they're going um, not only like campus things, but since it's in the middle of everything, you can kind of just go to things nearby. So like I said, they go to like movie showings or like the drinking and painting things in the park or just fun stuff like that. So although I haven't been to any yet, um, as I can see from the group messages that I can't get out of, there are tons of things to do um, on and near the campus to get involved, which is really fun. So, yeah. What is the major you're, you are going to study at your graduate? Yeah, so for, for my master's program, I'm doing um, prosthetics and orthotics. So um, mm -hmm. giving like artificial limbs um, to people that might have been born without them or mm -hmm. um, had birth defects or maybe like veterans that are losing their limbs. 
Um, I do want to just get my certification in um, general prosthetics and orthotics. And then when I do like a specialty or a concentration, I want to work on um, pediatrics. So young children. That's very um, nice. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. And what did you study in Maryland for your undergrad? Um, I studied exercise science. So mm -hmm. I was um, biology first, and then I, I found that the exercise science path was actually more geared to um, what I wanted to do for Pittsburgh's um, graduate program. So mm -hmm. once I saw my like prerequisite classes that I would need to be able to enter the master's program, I switched mm -hmm. over really quick. It was very easy in my Maryland school as well. Um, I was in the Maryland video, so shout out if you watch <laughs> that as well. Um, <laughs> but you can get a little bit more about the university I went to. Um, but that was pretty easy. And um, the Pittsburgh website, I also will say, is very easy to navigate, being that I'm, mm -hmm. I've just recently done it and kind of been through um, applying and everything for them. The mm -hmm. master's degrees are a little bit different for applying because I was just pretty much uploading my transcripts from my undergrad and all my grades and stuff. Um, but it is, it is even to easy to find like um, your undergraduate majors or anything like that as well I, you kind of just look it up the website's really easy to navigate through so if that's something you're worried about as well it was easy for me to find um and they will help you also find an undergraduate degree if that's what that's you're great. looking for awesome all right so uh, thank you guys. Thank you so much for introducing the universities you have experience with. Also, please, guys who are watching, if you have any questions for Kylie and her graduate studies or for Julia, Anna and Lily for the undergraduate studies at their universities, please let me know. I'll be happy to connect you or you can easily type your questions underneath the live stream send them to me through uh, Instagram under Education USA Check and I'll be happy to answer anything I can or I'll just forward it to uh, Lily, Anna, Kylie and Julia. Girls, thank you so much for today and guys, thank you for watching. Bye.